Every year, the fall anime season is considered one of the most special, delivering some of the highest quality shows. And you can't really argue with that. In 2022, we saw the rise of Chainsaw Man, Blue Lock and Bochy the Rock, not to mention some truly memorable sequels. Then came 2023, bringing us Free Ren, which is still the highest rated anime, The Apothecary Diaries and whatever this was. <laughs> But will the fall 2024 season live up to that hype? Is this the end of fall being considered the strongest season? Well, spoiler alert, it's not. Because we have ReZero Season 3, Uzumaki, Dandadan and so many other anime that looks insane. Never mind, this season is doomed. Damn, that's an insane split. I know you thought I'd say something else. Naughty, naughty. Let this grieving soul retire is one of the better fantasy anime this season. Giving us a protagonist who's essentially the anti seed He's the leader of the strongest clan, everyone thinks he's incredibly powerful, and they all listen to whatever he says. But what sets him apart is that he doesn't want any of it. As a kid, he and his friends decided to become adventurers together, but deep down, he always knew he wasn't on their level. Yet through sheer luck, he kept ranking higher and higher alongside them. Even when he completely messed up, his companions would somehow spin his mistake to seem intentional. Like they were all part of his plan. He knew better though. He was holding them back and eventually he decided to quit. <laughs> Alright mate, we understand how you feel. You will be our leader from now on. And just like that, he ended up leading the very clan he tried to leave behind. This anime is unironically a lot of fun. While it hasn't offered anything drastically original so far, the character interactions are genuinely entertaining, the animation looks decent, and the story has been pretty engaging. However, this isn't the only anime this season featuring the world's greatest clan. There's also the most notorious Yepper runs the world's greatest clan. It's your typical edgy revenge fantasy anime with all the usual ingredients. A party of adventurers, monsters, magic and stupidly oversized weapons. But the worst thing about this anime is that our main character is wearing a turtleneck with no arms. Well, despite his questionable fashion choices, our protagonist, Noel, had a very different upbringing. His grandfather was a legendary seeker and he trained Noel to surpass him. Noel was determined to live up to this expectation, but unfortunately his grandfather passed away one day. Before he died, Noel made a promise, he would become the strongest seeker ever. Now we follow an adult Noel who seems to be doing well for himself. He is living the adventurer's life, slowly but surely growing stronger with his party. However, even with his growing strength, he become restless. He wants more, he dreams of creating his own clan. And surprisingly, his companions agree. But then... Now Noel's goal isn't just to honor his grandfather's legacy, he's also driven by revenge. Not only for his grandfather's death, but for the people who betrayed him. Hmm, let's see what else we have so far. Oh, yeah, there's this anime, this... This? Oh, didn't this got announced 5 years ago? Man, it better look like it was ripped straight from the moon. Holy shit. This is Uzumaki, an anime that follows two characters, Kiri and Shuichi, a young couple living a simple life in a quiet rural town. But things are not as peaceful as they seem. Lately, everything has felt off. People in the town are acting strange, like really strange. And everything seems to resolve around spirals. From the patterns in the sky to the shapes of everyday objects, this eerie motif is taking over the town. This anime is, without a doubt, one of the most visually unique productions ever created. It's been in the works for five years 
years and when you see it it makes sense every frame looks like it's straight out of the original manga by junji ito but the coolest part it's a horror anime a genre that is rarely done right what i love most about it is that it doesn't rely on traditional horror tropes like gore or over the top violence instead it plays with psychological terror and body horror warping both the environment and the people in ways that will make your skin crawl the idea that something as simple as a spiral could become a symbol of madness is pure genius Okay, pause for a second. This is Huna a week later while editing this video. While the first episode of this anime looks absolutely gorgeous, the second one is subpar to say the least. I still recommend watching the first episode, because that by itself is amazing, but it's no point watching it after that, it's a waste of time. If I had a penny for every anime where a guy is forced to live in a working shrine with sisters and their first interaction involves him accidentally seeing them borderline naked, only to be forced into marrying one of them and taking over the temple, well, I'd only have two pennies. But seriously, how the fuck did we end up with the exact same anime plot twice in one year? You know, while the focus of most season is usually on new anime, this season feels pretty evenly split between new series and sequels. Considering just how many returning shows there are, we got the second season of Spirit Chronicles, more Arifureta, Bleach is back once again, Blue Lock with its PowerPoint presentation, Shangri-La Frontier second season which will hopefully look just as good as the first. There's also MF Ghost season 2 and I'm starting to think I might be the only one watching it. But most importantly, after 4 long years since season 2 ended, ReZero is finally back with an amazing hour and a half long episode. White Fox is really at the top of its game and in the episode with one of the coolest plot twists. And to no one's surprise, the anime has a rating of over 9. Make the highest rated is a guy ever. When I first heard about this adaptation, I wasn't sure what to expect. Especially since it's both a sport anime and a romance, two genres that don't typically blend well. However, I was pleasantly surprised. The story follows Taiki, a badminton player, and Chinatsu, a basketball player, who both attend the same academy and play on their respective high school teams. They meet by chance during an open practice, and from there, Taiki develops a huge crush on her. What I really appreciated about this anime is how the characters interact. Unlike many romance anime, their interactions aren't exaggerated or overly childish. Both Taiki and Chinatsu came across as fairly mature and their dynamic feels incredibly genuine, which adds a layer of realism to the story that I didn't expect. It also looks incredibly gorgeous with a few scenes that use CGI, but it's used so cleverly that it actually elevates the overall experience. But if you're looking for something equally as cute, there's 365 Days to the Wedding, an anime where the two main characters appear to be happily married. Or at least, uh, that's what everyone thinks. In reality, they fake the marriage to avoid relocating to Alaska for work. The premise is straightforward, but what made this anime enjoyable for me, aside from the fact that it's a romance between adults, is how the characters interact with each other. Their relationship is sweet and charming, without anything over the top. Even the animation is kept simple, well, except for the cat. The biggest new anime season next to Uzumaki, which we don't want to talk about anymore, is Danta Dan, a title I've been hearing about for years. But every time I ask someone what it's about, I never got a clear answer. Now after watching it, I understand why. I have no idea what I just watched, but I loved it. So here's my PowerPoint presentation explaining what this anime is about. So we have two main characters. She's Momo, he's Ken. Momo is a really aggressive girl that you don't want to be close to unless you are into that kind of stuff. And Ken is a geek. One day they start arguing. Ken says aliens are real. Momo says ghosts are real. Both try to prove what they believe in. Momo goes to an empty building looking for aliens. Ken goes to a tunnel looking for ghosts. Ken finds Turbo Granny. Turbo Granny wants his Vini. Momo finds aliens. Aliens wants her banana. Ken gets cursed, jumps through a phone, Turbo Granny takes off the alien's banana, Ken tries to save Momo, fails, Momo has psychic power, she saves herself, she saves Ken, but Granny still has his Vini. they escape from the spaceship, explosion, the end. If you don't understand half the stuff that happened, don't worry, because no one does. But what we do know is that Science Saru did an incredible job with the animation, the colors are vibrant, the directing is top tier, and it's easily the best looking anime this season. But it's not just the visuals. 
Because the characters are also fantastic. The dynamic between Momo and Ken is hilarious, especially when they argue. Watching them both open up to each other over time gave them a lot more depth than just being the aggressive girl and the typical geek. I have high hopes for this anime. There is nothing I didn't enjoy about it so far, but I can already tell it's going to be one of those controversial series if it keeps up the same level of craziness. But if you're looking for something just as weird, check out Trillion Game from Madhouse. The premise of this anime is basically fake it till you make it. The story follows two characters, Haru, an incredibly charismatic guy who will do anything to get people on his side, and Manabu, a talented but typical geek and engineer. The two drop out of college to start their own company, and we watch as they rise to become some of the richest people in the world. This anime is ridiculous in the best way possible. It's so different from what you usually get in anime, but maybe that's why I enjoyed it so much. I know it doesn't look that appealing at first glance, the art style is rather unpolished, but once you start watching, you understand why they made that choice. However, it's clear that Madhouse didn't aim to make this anime outstanding, but there is a good reason for that. But the Moment of the Earth is another anime Madhouse is releasing this season, and it's ridiculously good, and I don't use those words lightly. The aesthetics are stunning, with vibrant, colorful backgrounds, the characters feel truly alive, the music composed by Kensuke Ushio is fantastic. Even though he's also working on Dan Dan this season, the OST for this anime is somehow even better. It gives off a vibe reminiscent of a more polished Vinland saga. Speaking of Polish, this anime is set in 15th century Poland, a time when the church ruled over everything and anyone with ideas opposing the church teaching was jailed. And if they didn't relent, they were executed. From the very first scene, we quickly understand that it's deep and unafraid to show violence. The story follows Rafal, a brilliant young boy about to attend the university to study theology, a common path in those days. Rafal is crafty, always knowing how to navigate life to achieve the best possible outcome. But his life takes a turn when his father forces him to help Hubert, a man previously jailed for his heretical research, but released after supposedly renouncing it. In reality, Hubert hadn't stopped. He continued his work in astronomy, believing that the Earth revolves around the Sun and moves on its own axis. At the time, people believed that everything revolved around the Earth because that is what God wanted. They thought Earth was the center of the universe. Hubert shared his knowledge with Rafael, thanks him for his help and lets him go. Soon after, Hubert is arrested again, but this time he is executed for his beliefs and that scene in particular made me fall in love with this anime. Now, driven by Hubert's ideas, Rafa continues his search for the truth and begins studying astronomy at university. It's rare to get something this special. About the moment of the Earth excels in every aspect, whether it's the story, characters or visuals. There is so much more to talk about, but with so many other great anime this season, I will leave it there for now. Your Army Servant is probably the anime that has surprised me the most this season. It's a simple yet quirky story about a girl who one day shows up at the door of her main character, looking for a job as a maid. However, she's not the kind of maid you'd expect. She quickly reveals that she's an assassin and seems to have little understanding of anything else. Naturally, her protagonist, terrified after seeing her knife skills, decides not to hire her. But after she saves his life from Trakun, he ultimately decides to take her in. What surprised me the most about this anime is how unexpected worrisome it turned out to be. I never thought I'd want to see a story like this, but I really love the idea of watching someone who's never lived a normal life trying to experience it for the first time. It's so cute seeing her learn how to clean, eat foods she never had before and completely fall in love with them. All of this, combined with solid animation and the voice acting of the incredibly talented Reina Ueda, makes this anime one of my favorites this season. Another anime that really surprised me is an original from Studio Nut. It's a pretty depressing story about a college student, burdened with debt and only two years left to live. He sees no reason to go on and is genuinely considering ending it all. After all, what's the point of living those last two years if they aren't even enjoyable? One day while running from debt collectors, he falls into the sea where he's rescued by a group of friends who love fishing. Let's just say they encourage him to give it a try, but over time he actually begins to enjoy it and maybe even finds a new purpose in life. However, that happiness is quite short-lived. Nah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
the character design, the outdated tropes, the slapstick comedy. Man, I miss it so much. Over the past 5 years, we've seen quite a few successful anime remakes like Fruits Basket and Durusei Yatsura. Now, this season brings another word from the legendary manga Karumiko Takahashi, Roma One Half. This remake has been picked up by Mappa, and so far, I'm really satisfied with it. The animation looks great, but at the same time, it captures the style of early 90s anime. Plus, with nearly all the original voice actors returning, it's been a really fun experience so far. However, if we dig into the story, it might feel a little weird. There are three girls and one of them has to marry Ranma. But the problem is, none of them, not even their father, know Ranma. When Ranma arrives, they are surprised to find that Ranma isn't a guy. Well, not entirely. We quickly learn that Ranma's gender changes every time he takes a bet. The reason? During training in China, Ranma and his father fell into cursed springs. Now Ranma can switch between male and female, and his father can transform into a panda. This looks amazing! Mecha Oda is your typical mecha anime where powerful mechas battle each other. However, what makes this anime stand out isn't necessarily the story, though that's also solid. It's the animation. At first glance, looking at a scene like this, you'd think it was made by Studio Trigger or another big name studio. But to my surprise, it's actually the first ever anime by Thrift Studio. That's really cool, but also kind of scary as we've seen plenty of issues arise in similar projects from new studios. Still, it gives me hope seeing the staff watching the first episode together. <laughs> Loner in another world is surprisingly the first isekai anime this season, which is a new record. By this time, I usually would have told about at least 5. The anime is exactly what the title suggests. Loner in another world. He fights, he levels up, and there are some pretty funny moments. But if you're looking for what I'd call a more modern isekai, there's also I will become a villainess who goes down in history. Once again, it's a traditional villainess anime. But the unique work is that our main character wants to be the best villainess. Okay, let's see if there is any other fantasy anime. Hmm, this might be good. It's JC Steph, it has a rating of 7. Let's see what the synopsis says. Mm hmm, mm hmm, being hunted down, betrayed, mm hmm, awakened 6 years in the past, mm hmm, now as a 10 year old girl, mm hmm, she jokingly professes her love to the 19 year old dragon emperor Hados Theos Reeve. Uh, he accepts? Boys, I know what the title says, but I can't watch this anime. This is too weird for me. You disgusting! Yakuza Fiance is, without a doubt, the most fucked up enemy of this season. It's a story about an arranged marriage between the grandkids of two Yakuza leaders. But man, that first 18 minutes was so depressing to watch. Our main girl is forced by her grandpa to relocate to Tokyo to meet him. There she gets bullied and catcalled, and the guy is also a Yakuza. Everyone basically hates her without her having done anything. She lived a similar life in Osaka, but no one messed with her there, because everyone knew who her grandpa was. Here in Tokyo it's different, and it pissed me off so much. Everyone was an asshole to her. However, what kind of made me enjoy it is that at the end, her grandpa tells her not to come back. Instead, he wants her to make him fall in love with her and then crush him a year later. She starts to do exactly that. I'm not a huge fan of revenge stories, I think they are cringe, but this episode pissed me off so much that I actually want to see that happen. Well, the title of our next anime is Tsumasho, or as most people heard about it, If My Wife Becomes an Elementary School Student. <laughs> now please don't click off. I know the title sounds weird, but the anime is actually really awesome. We have Keisuke who had a pretty decent life. He found the love of his life, they had a child, but unfortunately she passed away. Since then, he turned into a gloomy, sad old man that doesn't really care about anything, doesn't really do anything for his daughter. He just lost all his will to live. But one day as the girl passed by the house, she suddenly remembered her past life and reconnected with the two of them. This anime got so much shit when the trailer dropped, yet it literally doesn't have anything weird in it. I do wonder though how the story will continue because after its premise, I don't know how they could keep it interesting. Another anime that might seem a bit confusing at first is 
how I attended an all guys mixer. It's a simple romance with an interesting twist. One day, Tokiba gets invited to a mixer by his female classmate. However, when he and his friends show up, they are surprised to find three guys. It turns out that the girls are dressed as drag kings, as that is their job, and if you're wondering what the girls actually look like, I have a strong feeling they will never reveal it. So... I guess we'll never know. Nowadays, one type of anime that I see popping up more and more are magical girl shows. Every season there's either one that's really wholesome or the exact opposite. This season we have Magi Lumiere, an anime set in a world where being a magical girl is a profession. What really surprised me is just how good it looks. Before its release, there were concerns that it would look terrible, but so far it's been really impressive. But now that I've gone through all the anime people will actually watch, let's start ranking them, and if you skip through that entire part, you have to at least subscribe, it would really help. Anyway, just like last season, this ranking is broken down into 5 different tiers. S tier means I highly recommend it, A tier means I liked it, but it might be missing something so far, B tier means it's good, but not for everyone, C tier is watchable, but not that great, and F tier means don't bother, it's a waste of time. Lettuce Grieving Soul Retire was fairly enjoyable for me. It has a cute hook, but doesn't stand out in any particular area, so I'd place it in a high B tier. The most notorious stalker is a low B. Honestly, I'm tempted to put it in C. For me, characters matter the most, and these ones were pretty annoying. Uzumaki is hard to rank. The first episode is easily S tier, but the second episode is an F. I'd put it in high C, just because half the anime is already over, and I'd still recommend watching the first episode by itself since it's amazing, but stop after that. Dying the Not with an Amagami Sister is a high B. It's your typical Echi Harem anime, but it's well made and so far I have no complaints. Blue Box was surprising. I expected it to be good, but I'm really enjoying it. So it's my first S tier without a doubt. 365 Days to the Wedding might be a low A, but I'm a bit biased because I love romance anime. It's simple, fun and something romance lovers will praise. Dandadan is our second S tier. As weird as it is, it offers something unique and the production is perfect. Trillion Game is A tier. As ugly as it looks, it has a unique and engaging story, and it's probably the most fun to binge watch since you will want to see what happens next. About the moment of the earth is the dark horse of the season, top of S tier for me. It's by far the best enemy of this season, the writing is great, the characters are enjoyable, and it looks like a movie. You Are My Servant really surprised me. It looks much better than I expected, and enjoyment wise, it's been the most fun for me. I'd like to put it in S tier, but there isn't anything particularly unique about it, so I place it in a high A. Negative Positive Angler is a low A. It has the potential to be deep, well written, but since it's an original, I'm worried it could fall off heavily. Rama One Half is a strong A. Story wise it might feel a bit simple compared to the deep, story driven anime we have nowadays, but it's still a near perfect remake. Mehode was another huge surprise. It had a lot of Sakuga, but like with Negative Positive Angler, I'm concerned since it's an original and also animated by a new studio, it could fall off pretty hard. Loner Life in Another World is a CTR anime. There's definitely an audience for this kind of show, but it doesn't offer anything new. I will become a villain as who goes down in history is quite similar. There are so many villainous enemy out there, but I enjoy this one a bit more, so I think a low B is perfect. Yakuza Fiance is a bit harder to rank. It really pisses me off with its story, but that's exactly what the revenge story aims to do. It's hard to say what direction it will take from here, but for now it's a solid B. Suma Show is a C for me personally. While there is nothing wrong with it, I just felt bored watching it. How I attended an all guys mixer is super simple, I don't even really know what the story is. The entire episode was basically a date, but I found it pretty enjoyable, so it's a solid B. Finally, Magi Lumiere just makes it to the bottom of A tier. This anime really surprised me, I'm not usually a fan of magical girl shows since they are not made for me, but the characters are interesting, not stereotypical, and the animation is really solid. Now, since a lot of people asked me in the last season on video to also rank sequels, I will base this ranking simply on how I think this season will go. ReZero is an obvious S tier. Season 2 was amazing and Season 3 feels even better so far. It's my favorite isekai without a doubt. Blue Lock is harder to rank. The first episode actually looked decent, with quality similar to the first half of season 1, but based on the leaks, I'm worried it might turn into a powerpoint presentation. If that happens, it would be F tier because at that point, the manga is much better. If it maintains the quality of the first half of season 1, I'd put it at a solid A tier. Lastly, MF Ghost 
is a solid A tier. The anime looks good enough, the CGI is acceptable for the races, and having Eurobeat as the OST is top notch. There's nothing to complain about. That's all of Fall 2024. It has some really good, weird, and fun anime. If you enjoyed this video, a subscription and a like is a huge support. And if you want to see what anime we had last season, click on this video. Goodbye.